G'day traders, Matt from Informative Traders. Today we're looking at point figure charts. Uh, it goes on from our last article on cause and effect. I want to show you uh, how you can use point figure charts to project the effect cause created by the cause. Uh, first thing we need to know about point figure charts is we need to have a box size. Now this chart here is, is the Aussie US dollar forex five minute chart. Uh, I've allocated a five pip box. So each time price moves up by five pips, a X is marked in the box above at that price level. That is the box size. Now, the way we use point and figure charts, uh, each column, there's a column for up moves, which is the X, and there's a column for down moves, which is the O's. You only start a new column when there is a reversal. Uh, which is predetermined. Uh, so in this case, I'm using a three box reversal. So the only time I start a new column is when there's a reversal of three boxes or three by five pips equals 15 pips. So you can see in the example down here, we started at 9330 and we moved up to 9435 without a 15 pip reversal. So price moved right through all those price levels and we didn't have a reversal of 15 pips. Now I'm using the closes. Uh, you can also use this system with highs and lows. I find it easier to update with the closes and I find it very effective. Okay, so once this first column was made up here to 9435, you see that we've started a new column here. That's because price then pulled back to the 9415 level, which was a pullback of more than 15 pips. So then we put the four zeros in. You can see the next column was made because then price rallied up to 9450, and we had more of a reversal than 15 pips. So the, the columns start after reversals of 15 pips, and that's how we get uh, the columns created. Okay, so we've looked at the basics of uh, point and figure and uh, how we update the chart. Now you can see on this chart that we've obviously moved higher. We've come back down to a pullback, moved higher again, gone sideways, and now we've fallen off. So in some of the early articles and videos, we, sp we spoke about the market cycle uh, and it's definitely to your advantage to know what part of the cycle or market the currency pair is in. Uh, as you can see here, this is an area of reaccumulation. And we know that because price rallied strongly after it. Uh, now, in a lot of my trading, I use Wyckoff. Uh, Richard Wyckoff was around in the early 1900s. And I use a lot of his stuff. You can go and Google him if you want to know more about his studies. Uh, but in this area of, of reaccumulation, what normally what will, will happen, as price moves up strongly, there is going to be a pullback. Now the professionals come in and make the market appear weak, hopefully leading to a selling climax or large amounts of retail traders and other funds, etc., getting out as new lows are made and they're actually accumulating for a higher move. Now Wyckoff spoke about a preliminary support where the price comes down on the first level where the price is supported, uh, moves back up and we see then a final push down for a selling climax. We normally see an automatic rally after that. Uh, from that heavy selling normally get, you get a reaction, that's the automatic rally. It comes down and retests that area on a secondary test and price moves up. We saw a sign of strength here where price was able to close above the resistance level and then it fell back down to one last dip which was the last point of support before the price broke out. Now I'll show you how we can uh, determine a projection of the cause built up in this area for the move higher.
Okay, so to calculate uh, the projection from the cores built up in this area, we need to take a horizontal count. Uh, you can do horizontal or vertical counts in point and figure charting. I use the horizontal method, and I'll explain that to you. Uh, what we do is we identify where the last point of support was on the chart, and we count back to where the initial preliminary support came in when the price fell on the heavy volume. Because this is the area where they're accumulating and building cores, and we want to know how far that will project up. So if we count the columns back here, uh, there's 11 columns back from the last point of support back to the preliminary support. Uh, and what we do is we times that by the box reversal amount, which is three boxes by five pips, is 15 pips. So that equals 11 by 15 is 165 pip move. You add that to the last point of support, and that gives us 0.9650. So this cause that's built here, our horizontal count is projecting us that it will move to 9650. And as you can see here, the target was hit. This would have been a really, really good trade. If you took a pullback somewhere once we saw the breakout confirmed, uh, in this area you had your stop below the last point of support. If the professionals are truly marking this up, they're not going to bring the price down lower than that LPS wouldn't make sense. Uh, once it's broken out, they want to mark it up quickly. They don't want anyone to get in who missed this run. They want them to have to pay higher to get in, which, which will mark the price up quicker and higher. Uh, and as you can see, we hit our target. Uh, you could have had a, say, 30 pip stop in this case, this example, for about 130, 140 pip move. So you're looking somewhere in the four to five times your risk for your reward, and that is an excellent trade. But you need to identify, obviously, the Wyckoff setup, the reaccumulation, and how we can project higher. Uh, once we got to the top here, we started an area of distribution. Let's discuss that. Okay, so the first thing I noticed about this distribution at the top is look at the size of the cores that's being built up. If we go back to the reaccumulation area here, we had this amount of cores for that sort of projection. You can see that the bigger the cores, it's going to be a bigger move. Okay, so let's look at let's look at the setup. Now it's similar to uh, down the bottom here when we had the reaccumulation. Uh, obviously, just the opposite at the top. First of all, we saw a preliminary supply come in. That's a large move up, the volume starts to come in, the professionals are starting to offload everything they bought here, and obviously lower. Uh, the, the price is pushed up once again and we see a buying climax. Now once price moves up on high volume, uh, once it reverses, you're going to see a reaction. We see the automatic reaction down to here. We then come up, have a secondary test of the area up here. We move back down, we see a sign of weakness where price closes below the previous support level. It's our first indication that there could be some weakness here. We move up, we get an area of last point of supply, and then price is marked down heavily. And we all know once you move down through a support level, uh, stops are hit and the price plummets. Now we actually came back up here and we had a nice retest and price has fallen further. So let's look at the count. Okay, similar to the reaccumulation with the count, this time we need to take a count back, a horizontal count from the last point of supply back to where the preliminary supply first came in. Now you can see here that's 25 columns. So the first thing you should notice is 25 columns compared to 11 down here this is going to be somewhat of more than two times the projection we had originally here for the uh, reaccumulation. So we're expecting a large move down. Okay, so 25 columns by the 15 pips is 375 pips. We take that away from 
this last point of supply and we get 0.9260. So doing a horizontal count of all the cores that's built up in this area, this is telling us that this is going to fall somewhere down to the 9260 level. That is a fairly, fairly big move on a five minute chart. Uh, obviously it's going to take some time, but uh, if you know that this projection is looking to move you down to somewhere in that range, your bias has to be short, and you take shorts back on pullbacks to resistance, and you could trade this right down to somewhere in that area, uh, which would be a very good trade. So this is just a great example of showing you how when cause is built up, you will see an effect, but it's the amount of cause that's built up and the greater the effect from that. So we can see that that has moved to there. This one is going to see us a lot bigger move. Uh, so that's just a small little uh, video on point figure charts, how you can project. And I feel that uh, using this technique, it takes a lot of the um, guesswork out of, of which way the trend is, where the market cycle is at, and areas that you'll be looking to take profit on your on your trades. Uh, it takes a lot of the fear out of putting on trades for newer traders and gives you another weapon to use in your trading. So cheers guys, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be showing a lot more examples in the future. I'm currently short the US, the Aussie US uh, on this setup and uh, let's see how we do. Cheers guys.